And we're going to begin today and really begin again in the series we're teaching on the master key. And we've been saying, and what you really know, a master key opens all doors. Amen. And we need doors open in our lives. Amen. Amen. And the keys that we have can open some doors, but the keys that God gives us can open every door. Amen. So we're going to begin today and, and move forward in that teaching series today. Isaiah chapter 40, I want to read verse 31, verse 31. And it says, in fact, read with me if you can read it on the screen there. But those who hope in the Lord will renew or exchange their strength. They will soar on wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That's a prophecy from Isaiah God speaking through the prophet Isaiah and telling us and showing us that when you trust in God, when you hope in God, he can do something very special for us. And that special thing is exchange. Say exchange. exchange. Now, my topic today is the master key, the great exchange. Because you're going to find out today that we're always exchanging, doing exchanging. But we need what I would call a great exchange. Now, there's exchange and there's great exchange. And simply put, exchange is what we do, but the great exchange is what God does. Amen? Amen. So that is our master key for today. Now, exchange is a part of life. We know what it means, but there are in our lives, there are spiritual exchanges. There are exchanges that God is doing that sometimes we miss. And the Bible here said, Isaiah said, that when we uh, renew or exchange strength, we're going to be able to soar like eagles. We're going to run and not be worried and walk and not faint. So if you want to soar, if you want to run, if you want to walk, you need an exchange. Amen. And really, the hardest part is not soaring. The hardest part is not running. The hardest part is walking. Because walking is the most boring thing. Walking seems to be the most unimportant thing, but walking, we do more walking than running and soaring. Soaring inherently is exciting. We go to Africa, the mission trip, we are soaring. We are soaring and, and over there and all that work and excitement of ministering. But then that's like a week, one or two weeks every two years. But every day you got to walk. You go to work, you know, six, five, six days a week. You got to walk at work. You, you can't soar at work. Well, soaring may happen. Good things happen at work sometimes. Exciting times happen. But your real job isn't about soaring and about running. It's about walking. The point is that in order to do anything, any one of those, we have to renew or exchange our strength. You all believe that? Yes. Now, it's obvious because we actually experience a renewing and exchange every day. It's called sleep. It's called sleep. That, you know, we, we sleep about one-third of our lives. One-third of your life is sleep. Eight hours a day. We sleep more or less. And so the point is, you know, God has built into our bodies the need for sleep. And he really says to us through that some things that are important. I'm going to show you a video right now. We've understood some things through science about what sleep does. Now, you already know what a lack of sleep does. Right? Cranky and, I mean, that's, in fact, being cranky is the, is the least of problems from a lack of sleep. So watch the video, but get a picture of that God has built into us the need for exchange. And so the involuntary exchange of having to sleep is a parable of the voluntary exchanges we have to do when we're awake, all right? So watch this video, it's real short. Every night, almost everyone on the planet enters into a state of unconsciousness and paralysis. But what is really happening inside the body when we drift off? And what's the impact if we don't get enough sleep? 
Sleep is regulated by your circadian rhythm, or body clock, located in the brain. The body clock responds to light cues, ramping up production of the hormone melatonin at night and switching it off when it senses light. There are four stages of sleep that the body experiences and cycles throughout the night. On a good night, we cycle through these stages four or five times. Stages one and two are light sleep. This is the transition from being awake to falling asleep. Heart rate and breathing begin to slow, body temperature falls, and muscles may twitch. Stage three is sometimes referred to as delta sleep because of the slow delta brain waves that are released during this stage. This is the first stage of deep sleep, where our cells produce the most growth hormone to service bones and muscles, allowing the body to repair itself. Stage four is where we begin to dream. The body creates chemicals that render it temporarily paralyzed so that we do not act out our dreams. In this stage, the brain is extremely active and our eyes, although closed, dart back and forth as if we were awake. Humans roughly spend one third of their lives asleep. Modern lifestyles, stress, and the proliferation of technology mean that people are sleeping far less today than they were a century ago. Sleeping less than seven hours per day is associated with an increased risk of developing chronic conditions, which could reduce life expectancy. So for a healthier, longer life, get some shut-eye. All right. Now there's a whole lot more science than that. And the, and the, and the benefits are, of sleep are great. Even for example, if you have a big test coming up the next day, staying up all night to cram for it won't help you at all. Because when you study and you sleep, while you're sleeping, your brain processes the information you've studied and helps it store it in memory. Athletics, if, you know, when you rest before you do athletics, then while you're sleeping, your body prepares itself to exert itself the next day. But a lack of sleep prevents all of that. So the point is, that's an exchange that happens every night when you sleep. And how much more do we need to be, when we're awake, be conscious of what God is doing with us? Amen, somebody? So that is involuntary. Sleep is involuntary. You can, you, you can fight it for a little bit, but eventually it takes you over. But there, are in, but, but there are voluntary things we can do, exchanges to take, that will help us. So normal activities and challenges make a, take a toll on our lives. This is obvious. There are circumstances you've been through, we've all been through, that uh, require us to, to cope and overcome. There are difficult things like people passing and, and you know, bad uh, things happening and setbacks and so forth. Those are all things that happen in life that require an exchange. I mean, sleep helps. But then more than that, we need the great exchange. That's what God brings. Amen? So whatever situation you're dealing with, that God made a provision through grace. And the grace of God is everything that you need. He makes available to us. The Bible says in John 1, verse 16, And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. Say grace for grace. Some versions say grace leading to grace. That is, God gives you grace to get more grace. That is, he gives you the means to get what you need. He gives you the means to exchange what ails you, what hurts you, to receive what helps you, what strengthens you. You believe that? Amen. So thank God this is a master key that we can exchange strength. Look at 1 John chapter 2. It's on the screen as well. Now, the first most important exchange we need is salvation itself. The exchange we're talking about began with what Jesus did. The Bible says in 1 John 2 and 2 that he himself is a propitiation, which means he's the substitute 
are an exchange for our sins. Jesus Christ is exchanged for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. So Jesus gave his life, his shed his blood to be the exchange in order to take our sin away and give us a new life. Is that right? Amen. It all begins there. That's the most important exchange of all. That without that exchange as a, as a believer in Christ, nothing else really can happen. That's the first, the most important exchange. Our sins for Jesus' righteousness. Say, my sins my for Jesus' righteousness. All right, here's master key number one for today. The great exchange is God's method for our renewal of strength. Please hear that. Renewal of strength. Just like you have to sleep to renew your body, renew your mind, that there are keys that help us renew our strength spiritually, emotionally, in every kind of way. This is not new. Throughout the Bible, we've seen examples of God working in people, exchanging their strength, helping them overcome. All throughout the Bible, God does this. This is a cycle of God's grace, active in all time with all, with all people that, who trust God. And we can't change ourselves. We can't, you cannot exchange or help yourself and exchange your own strength. I can't make myself better by myself. That's what I'm saying. I need... And we need something bigger and better than us to help us become better. Amen. Is that right? Amen. We can make superficial adjustments to ourselves, but the deep and lasting change that we need can only come from our creator God. So if it's something small, maybe you can do it. Maybe your friend can help you do it. But if it's something big and important, we need God to do it. Amen, somebody? Amen. Now, sometimes... An exchange is not a good exchange. Look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. Sometimes the exchange is not good, so we have to literally, we have to uh, do an exchange to undo a bad exchange. Eh? That makes sense? We've done, we have, we've had a bad encounter, a bad exchange, bad decision. So we have to do something else to, to, to reverse that bad decision. So the Bible says this, Jesus said, in Matthew 16, verse 25, whoever, whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. It's right there, isn't it? Yeah. So if you desire to save your life, that is, I'm going to do things my way, have it my way, do it my way, all this, you actually will lose your life by trying to save your life. By trying to exchange yourself for you, more of yourself, you lose out on what you can really have that's more than you. Then he said this, Jesus said, going on, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He don't mean lose your life like go die, but he means that you give yourself over to him. Give yourself over to his purpose and serving his will. When you exchange your life, that way you'll get back his life. You'll get back more when you give yours up. Verse 25, it says, what is a profit to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Then he says, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So nothing's more important than your soul, your life, the life that God has planned for you. So when you exchange the way you are, the way things are, what you think, how you operate, when you exchange that, for what Jesus wants to give you, you're going to come to a much richer life, a much better life. You believe that? Amen. Another master key here. Pay attention to your exchanges. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Pay, attention Pay attention to my exchanges. Now, we're always giving up one thing for another. That's a part of life. But be mindful of what you are exchanging. Be careful. My granddad preached a sermon one time. He said, you got what you wanted and lost what you had. <laughs> granddad Hudson. A lot of people exchange in, in bad ways. For example, do you know that some people exchange true learning for a Google search? No. Think about that. Rather than really learn it from somebody, 
and really get into it and understand and embrace it, they do a Google search. And so the Google search bring up results, and they, th they, exchange, they exchange real learning for what they found online. Listen, y'all, now Google searches aren't always bad. I, I, all of us search Google. The thing is this, though. Did you know this? Did you know? When you search on Google, anything on Google, the whole first page is advertised results. What you see on the first page of a Google search, somebody paid for the position that you see. They paid to have their answer, their response to your search on the first page. So that means what you're getting, what you're exchanging, sometimes is for information that's probably biased or probably twisted or probably, you know what I'm saying, not, not genuine. So what you want is real learning. What you want is to gain knowledge and experience, and the experience part you don't get from Google search. Amen, somebody? But again, that said, we all search for things, get information. That's fine. That's just fine. But again, again, the master key is pay attention to your exchanges. You know, doctors deal with this all the time. <laughs> I mean, all professional people. So, so the patient come to the doctor and saying to the doctor, you know, I did a Google search, and I found this out about my condition. So now they have exchanged their doctor's expertise for what they found online. Not to say you can't challenge and ask questions of a doctor. They welcome that. The point is, be careful what you're exchanging. I mean, there are people, there are people, uh, you know, that you might know who think the earth is flat. That's a movement. The flat earthers. They have exchanged the wrong way. Romans 1, this says it all. Romans 1, 24, this makes it abundantly clear. Therefore, God gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped the, and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. So this is a problem. That when people literally will exchange the truth of God, the truth of how life is, how God made us, all this, they'll exchange the truth of God for a lie. And that's, that's obviously not the way to go. Then he says they worship uh, the creature, meaning the created things, worship the created thing more than the creator. Now listen, I like mountains, I like oceans, I like shorelines and all that stuff. But those are all created things. Those are creatures, the mountains, the shorelines, the oceans. I don't worship those things. I like those things. If anything, <clears throat> that reminds me of the creator. So we don't want to exchange the truth for a lie <clears throat> and then get into serving or worshiping things created more than the creator. Make sense? Amen. Pay attention to your exchanges. Pay attention. When you give your time or you exchange some of your time to watch television, to read a book or a magazine, listen to music. I mean, when you exchange your time for those things, be mindful of your exchanges. Pay attention to your exchanges. Come on, somebody. We exchange time with God in prayer, with hanging out with friends or whatever. I mean, we all, we all do exchanges. Even when you do pray to God, you make this change that I'm not going to watch the news all morning. I'm going to spend time in prayer. We exchange all kinds of ways. So the master key is just say, I'm paying attention. Say this, I'm paying attention, I'm paying attention. to my exchanges. Because every exchange has some consequence. Sometimes it's very small, almost you can't even detect it. But over time, those exchanges are later on, like seeds we sow, they can manifest in, uh, something later on, good or bad. So then, let's be mindful of our exchanges. Because we really want to make good choices. And really, we have no reason not to, because God helping us. He's helping us. Just stop and pause and pray and reflect and think. That's why the Bible says don't be hasty. Haste is 
when we make an exchange without thinking about the consequence or the outcomes. Just slow down a little bit and reflect and think and pray, and you'll come to a much better decision many times and make much better exchanges. Amen, somebody? Every situation in life will benefit from an exchange if you give that to God and if you make it what I call a great exchange. A great exchange involves Christ and the word. Again, we all do exchanges, but a great exchange always involves God. It involves scripture. It involves God's wisdom. You know, Jesus is not like a general practitioner. He's a specialist. About everything, all right? All right, Jesus is a specialist. And we miss out on so much more by not going to God, but not talking. He's the creator. Now, I know that we feel like some things are too small for God. But the Bible says God has numbered the hairs on our head. So if God knows how much hair you have or don't have, and he cares about that, he cares about every detail of your life. Peter said that God gives us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That's about everything that's important, life and godliness. So God, he gives us everything that pertains. So then, so then the great exchanges are always possible. And don't settle for just a lesser exchange when you have the opportunity to make great exchanges in the wisdom of God. The old folks used to say, uh, Jesus is on the main line. Call him up and tell him what you want. Had old song we sang. He's on the main line. Call him up. And then the refrain was, call him up, call him up, call him up, you know. And it's, it's, it's nice because it reminds us that you can talk to a lot of people. You can talk to this person, that person, go around here. But there's a main line. There is a direct line you have to Jesus, the word of God. You got a Bible sitting right over there. You can pick it up. You can read it. You can, you can bow for a moment of prayer or a season of prayer. You don't have to rely on or make exchanges just based on what you feel at the moment. Because the whole marketing system in the whole world is kind of set up for you to make a quick exchange, a quick decision. Exchange your money for that product, for that service. You know, they even say to you now, this is, a, this is a red light special or whatever, blue light special, and this special is going to last for only, only, one, only 30 more minutes. You got to decide in 30 minutes or before the day is over. Now, I get that. That's good. That's really good marketing. But if you don't want that, if you don't need that, nothing should persuade you to make that exchange. You didn't go in there for that. Amen. Come on, you went, there, you went in there, that's called bait and switch. You know about that too. You went in there for that, for that uh, discount TV that you saw in the newspaper. They only had like three in the whole store. And those went away the first bait and switch. They figured now that you're in here, now that you're here, then we'll try to get you to buy something else. It's coming. Again, it's good market, it's good business, actually. The point is this. You should be mindful of your exchanges. Because nothing anybody shows you just today is worth you exchanging today. Nothing, nothing and nobody that you have never met or ever experienced is worth you making an exchange to get. That's what the enemy would like to do to us. That's how we have been. Our mistakes have come out of being coerced and being impulsive. Come on, somebody. And doing stuff on the, on the cuff, off the cuff, we should not have done. All right. So then Jesus, you know, he, he knows about this. He was tempted. The devil came, and he had been fasting and praying 40 days. When that 40 days was ended, the devil came around and tried to tempt him. Said stuff like, well, if you're the son of God, you know, cast yourself down or, or, he said, or make this stone into bread. He tried, to, he tried to get Jesus Christ to exchange his power 
for his suggestion. Amen? Give you a tip. Don't, don't respond to the enemy's suggestions. Don't even respond to people you don't even know. Amen, somebody? I mean, if somebody you don't know is, is acting crazy and say something bad to you, don't even, exchange, don't even don't exchange your energy for that. Pay attention. Be mindful of your exchanges. Because most things in life aren't worth any response at all. A lot of things I'll say. All right. Look at Isaiah 61. So, but, but when Jesus, when, when Satan came to tempt Jesus to exchange his suggestion for it, his power demonstrated, Jesus said, no, no, no. You know, he says, Satan, get behind me. He said, no, you know, man lives by the word of God. We live by the word. I don't do things because people tempt me or goad me. I do what God says when God says do it. Now, here's a, here's a very good very good text because when Jesus began his public ministry, we see it in the Gospels in Luke 4, for example, Jesus read this scripture. He went, he went into the synagogue, the Bible says, and he stood up to read as his custom was. And he was given the scroll or the book of Isaiah. And he found the place where it was written. He found Isaiah 61. We have with no chapters back then, but he found this place in Isaiah. Notice this, please. This was Jesus' first sermon, first message, if you will. He pronounced his ministry, began his ministry, and he began with a message of exchange. He began with a message of a great exchange. He says, the Spirit of God is upon me. He anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Those are exchanges, healing for the brokenhearted. Good news to the poor. These are exchanges. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Amen, former captives. Exchange. The opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, a year of jubilee, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. So when you mourn, what do you do? Receive comfort. That's why mourning doesn't have to continue forever, right? We exchange mourning. Mourning is appropriate. Mourning is proper. But then we at some point exchange our mourning for comfort. He says to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. That's supernatural. That's pretty strong. Because ashes are burned, things burned and things gone. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. These are all exchanges, great exchanges. That they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So you see, when we respond to Jesus and his great exchanges, it always lifts us up to a, up to a better place. And if we don't get elevated, it's because we've not even either listened to Jesus, obeyed him, or we have let some other exchange come in in its place and hurt us and corrupt us. But if we do great exchange, it always leads to a better place. So again, he said there, Isaiah 40, 31, again, at our opening scripture, he said again, uh, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength or exchange their strength then they can soar on wings as eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Now, here's a, a, uh, an important key here, uh, or a master key, that the exchange of strength is a kingdom principle. And we just read that in Isaiah. We see it in the Gospels. The exchange of strength is a kingdom principle, which means it's the way we need to live. Now, another point here to that is, how do, you get, okay, how do you get into, how can you enter into a place where you're having exchanges, great exchanges? How does it actually happen? Well, it's very simple. That God's command, say God's command, God's command. In, my in my obedience, triggers, triggers. A, great a great exchange. That's how it works. Rarely do we on our own come up with these exchanges or great leaps in our faith and our walk with God. Usually, almost always, well, always either God 
or someone sent by God will give us a command from God or a word from God or a sermon, scripture, whatever teaching. And then our obedience to that triggers an exchange. An example of that is Joshua chapter one. Verse nine. Where God said, have I not commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Get that because in that day they were faced with a great dilemma. They were faced with a great challenge. The people of Israel with Joshua. Moses was dead now. The great man was gone. Now here's Joshua, new leader. And and they had to make decisions, but they were afraid. Fear is a natural response to unknown things. So God said, first of all, I'm commanding you, do not. He said, well, be strong and courageous, first of all. Now, listen, you know, if you're already strong, why I got to tell you be strong? What it is, actually, it's an awakening of strength. See, you sometimes you have things, you have abilities you don't know about. Not fully. And so a command or a mandate is the challenge you need to trigger and release in you an ability, an exchange where you stop thinking you can't do something and now think, oh, I can do that. And going from can't to can is a huge exchange. It's, it's fun to see people make that exchange. I mean, when you teach and help people, you get to see that a lot where people go from not being able to, to being able to. You've literally empowered somebody to do what they couldn't do. Now, they're doing it, it's not you, it's you doing it. Uh, it's, th it's them doing it, but your command, your mandate triggered in them, the exchange. That's what coaching, coaching and educators are so important, teachers, all of us who help people, that's how we get help. That's how we change, somebody put a demand on us. Someone expected it. Someone put a requirement on us. And we obeyed. And guess what? We came up. Amen. We came up. We came up. Amen. See, it says, do not be discouraged because that will come. See, he knew, see God saying things, God, God, he's a specialist, right? So he knows what you're going to deal with. He knows that before he give the command, you got to be encouraged to be strong and courageous. So you don't say, you don't say, do this, now be strong. No, no. I'm going to tell you first, be strong and courageous. I'm, getting ready, I'm, I'm fixing to tell you something, okay? So, so be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid and don't be discouraged. And then I'm, I'm going to tell you what I want to do with you, see? So God sets you up with encouragement, and then he says, now do this. Because if God tells you things before he encourages you, it's just too much for you. It's too much for us. So God, he, he, he gives us faith, and then he gives us the assignment. Make sense? Amen. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, Proverbs 3, verse 5. Last scripture for today. Another one. Again, a master key exchange of strength is a kingdom principle. Proverbs 3, 5, and says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean or lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. See the exchange isn't here? The exchange, he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean on your what? Understanding. The exchange is your understanding for your trust in God. Now, understanding is important. We know this. But when you don't know, then you don't know you don't know. So then I need, I need a different level now. I need, to help, I need God to help me. My understanding is insufficient. He says, he said, in all your ways, submit to him. That's an exchange. I'm going to give up my my right or my feeling or my whatever, I'm going to submit to God. I'm going to give myself to God. I'm going to exchange myself or what I think to God. And he says, and he will make your paths straight, make your paths clear. That's a pretty good deal. Here, listen, y'all, here's your choice. 
Do it your way and stay confused. <laughs> Trust God and have a clear path. That's pretty simple, isn't it? And yet, because of the enemy, Satan darkens the minds, people continue choosing their own way. It's almost insane. But that's, the kind of, that's what darkness, darkness renders one unable to see and function. But when we exchange, then we find straight paths. Final points here. Now, here's some sources of, of exchange, some sources of exchange and great exchange in your life. And you've received all these, and you can offer these up. First is education. Say education. Education, education is a source of exchange and great exchange because if you, don't, if you don't have not been taught, if you haven't learned, you just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Education. Edification is a source where you're being built up spiritually and built up emotionally and built up personally. That when you're edified and built up, that becomes a source of exchange for you. Encouragement. Just someone just encouraging you, letting you know what they believe that you can do. That's a source. Exhortation, which is like encouragement, but it's more verbal. Um, you know, but exhortation also, these are ways, all these four are ways in which these are, these are sources of our encouragement, of our exchange, excuse me, exchange. So this is pretty simple, but very important. We're always making exchanges. We make exchanges every day, one way or another. And most of those things are simple. Uh, you can probably think of examples now of things of, of how you make exchanges every day. And think of also how exchanges we make don't really help us. Right? You ever gone someplace and went over there and spent time and money and got nothing out of it? You know, that was a bad exchange. Here's a quote. Last thought here is a quote. A person named Mary Pickford. I don't know who she is, but the quote, I like the quote. She said, you have made mistakes. There is always another chance for you. You may have a fresh start any moment you choose. For this thing we call failure is not the falling down, but the staying down. It's a good quote, isn't it? So that, there's the exchange. The exchange is when you make a mistake. The exchange is I'm going to get up and distance myself. From the mistake. I'll learn from the mistake. I'm going to exchange the whole mistake, the whole quote unquote failure, by getting up and going in a better direction with better knowledge and whatever. So that even when we fall down or fail or come short, that by no means is the end. It's actually a beginning. Let Jesus help you with your exchange. So your exchanges in life, what you choose to do, what you give up for something else, it'll be a great exchange when you include Christ and his word. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand.